Reminiscence. This is a movie starring Hugh Jackman that uh, premiered both on HBO Max and in theaters over the weekend. It bombed. It did really horribly at the box office. Now, uh, a film's true quality has never been defined and will never be defined by how well it did uh, at the box office. But with that said, I completely understand why this thing bombed. It's a hard premise to sell. Hugh Jackman and Tandy Newton play two people who own a machine uh, that allows you to reaccess uh, old memories from your life. And I'll, and I'll actually start with what I liked here, as I always do, because I don't hate this movie. Um, I don't think it's very good, but of all the movies that I've seen this summer, there's part of me that believes that this had the most potential. And a big reason for that is for the first 30 minutes, I was really with this thing. I am kind of obsessed by the idea of nostalgia, of old memories. And, and you have a, a character in this film played by Rebecca Ferguson, who Hugh Jackman falls in love with. Uh, they, they're together. Then one day she just vanishes. And that part, that element of the story really did hook me. Because I'll be honest, most movies lose me in the first act. I usually know within the first 15 to 20 minutes of a film, like how good or bad it's going to be. Now, sometimes there are exceptions, but usually I know in the first act if a film's going to be good or not. And for the first 30 minutes of this thing, I was with it. I, I, I'm Like I said, I like that idea of nostalgia, the idea of having somebody in your life that you really care for, then they're just gone. And then you kind of are, are left to wonder, man, were they, did they really matter that much to me? Did I know them the way that I thought I did? That element of this story works. This film is directed by a woman named Lisa Joy. She created or co helped co-create, I believe, uh, the TV show Westworld. But she's also married to Jonathan Nolan, who is the younger brother of Christopher Nolan. And this film has a very Nolan-esque uh, influence. Obviously, the idea of being able to, to access old memories uh, is, is kind of, you know, there's a Nolan influence there with what he was able to do with Inception. I think for the most part, this thing is well acted. Hugh Jackman carries this. Hugh Jackman is as intense as ever. I can't say he's necessarily like but but you know, like I said, he carries this because he's such he's such a good actor. I mean, there's few actors in Hollywood that commit the way Hugh Jackman does. I mean, he he whole asses everything. The guy doesn't half ass anything. I, I like him in this. I think he gives a good performance, and even the parts where it seemed like it was going off the rails, he he kind of is able to center this thing again. I can't say that this is a super well directed movie, but I do believe that Lisa Joy can be a very good director at some point in the future. I, I feel like I, I'd be interested to see what she does with with her films going forward because there is a visual style to this that was intriguing. The the it gets a little bit muddled at points, as does the storytelling. I'll talk about that here in just a second. But but there's elements to this thing that do look uh, relatively purdy, and I'd like to see what she does next uh, after this film. The problem is, and this is where I get into what I don't like, the part of this movie that works for me is the, the love story element with Rebecca Ferguson and Hugh Jackman. Now, they don't have a whole lot of chemistry, but they also don't have a lot of screen time together. A lot of it's kind of told in flashback. The problem is about 30 minutes in, the movie kind of takes a turn and it becomes your basic cop procedural, almost mafioso-esque a crime drama and that element of the script really doesn't work for me. It's really derivative, very boring, and, and the film is not well written at all. Now, I think Hugh Jackman finds a way to kind of elevate a lot of this material at points, but there is such thing as a movie being overwritten and I feel like that's kind of what you have here. Now, at, with that said... Uh, there's parts I involving the characters that I feel like are a little bit half-baked. And that's really the biggest problem I have with this thing is as intrigued as I was early on by the Hugh Jackman storyline and him going back trying to, to access these memories with him and Rebecca Ferguson trying to find her again, there is zero emotional weight to any of this. You don't care about any of these characters at all. There's no real depth to this story, and it really bogs this thing down. I feel like this thing could have used another draft of the script to really flesh out these characters, because they feel very generic. They feel, feel very, not just two-dimensional, but one-dimensional at points, and it prevents this thing from uh, kind of getting off the ground. But outside of some pretty visuals, there's also nothing about it that is very cinematic. This feels like it would have worked better almost as, as an HBO miniseries, or, or TV series, which is what uh, Westworld was. Obviously, Lisa Joy uh, helped create uh, that TV show. I wanted to like it, and there were elements that I really did connect with, like strangely connected a whole lot with, but as a whole, uh, the movie falls uh, pretty darn flat. I'm giving it a 4 out of 10. You don't care enough about the characters, and as interested as I was uh, in the premise at first... It just didn't do a whole lot for me as the film went along. So that'll do it for this review. You can follow me on Twitter at Castellani2014. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get those watch hours up, up, up. Thank you for watching, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Peace and happiness.